Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to this two-part tutorial series all about how to create a hex bolt and a match thread hex nut. Now, in the first part of this tutorial series, we went through a true step-by-step -step on how to create a hex bolt. Lots of good lessons in that tutorial. But now we're gonna talk about this part and we're gonna talk about how to create what are called matching threads. So we've got an existing part and we want to take the threads from that existing part and kind of transfer them into the second part so that the two parts can be threaded together. Well, that's what we're gonna get into in today's tutorial. Ow. So in the previous video, we did a true step-by-step -step tutorial showing all the steps required to create the model of this hex bolt. Now we're gonna try to create the matching component, the hex nut, along with the matching threads. And to do this, we're gonna transfer the threads directly from the hex bolt model into the hex nut model. So to get started, we're gonna create an offset plane here and this offset location can more or less be arbitrary, meaning it can be anywhere along this shaft. Now, when you get more into the nuances of things like where do the threads engage and, and where does the, the hex nut stop spinning at the base of the hex bolt, then you might, might, you might wanna take a little more care regarding where this initial plane is. But for today's example, we're just gonna say that this plane can be located anywhere along that shaft 25 millimeters is the default, and that sounds good to me. So I'm gonna create a new sketch here on this plane. So I'm gonna select this plane, I'm going to begin a new sketch, and I'm going to select this face down here and do a convert or a use option to convert that shape up to this location. That way, the hex size of the nut will match the hex size of the bolt. If you want it to be a little bit larger or a little bit smaller, then maybe you could use the sketch offset command to facilitate that. I'm also going to convert this original uh, inscribed circle that we've got from this original sketch here. We talked about this in the previous tutorial and I'm converting this to use it for the same reason, to kind of round off the corners when we go to create this hex nut. So I'm going to create that geometry using an extrude command, but before I do, there's one last thing that I'm gonna do, and that is I'm going to create one final circle here. Now, the original shaft diameter that we used was 20 millimeters. I'm gonna make this just a little bit smaller. I'm gonna make this 18 millimeters, and you'll see what we're gonna be using this for here in just a moment. So now I'm gonna take that geometry, I'm gonna to choose to extrude that geometry, and that geometry is gonna get extruded to a height of, you know, the original model had the, the head at a, a thickness of 13 millimeters. Let's make this a little bit larger. Let's make this 20 millimeters, and we're gonna make this symmetric so it's kind of coming up from the middle. The final thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna to choose to create this as a new body, a new part here in the Onshape Parts Studio. So we're not merging this to the original geometry, but instead we're gonna leave ourselves with some new geometry or a new part. So I'm gonna hit the green check mark here, and now I can go down into my Parts Studio and start renaming this di these different parts. So this is gonna be Shift N, I'll call this one Hex Bolt, and I'm gonna click the second one here, Shift N, and we're gonna call this one Hex Nut. So now that we've created that hex nut there, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, utilize that geometry that we created, that uh, that sketch geometry. Really, what we, what we really need here is we really need a point here on this uh, on this arc, but we can grab that point using a pierce constraint. So I'm going to go to my front plane. So here we go, front front plane of the model. You can see this is the plane that is running directly through those points on the hex, and I'm going to use that front plane and begin a new sketch. And then once I use that front plane to begin a new sketch, what I'm gonna do is just create a point here. And this point is going to have a pierce constraint to this circle, very similar to what we did in the last tutorial. That way that point is located exactly where the circle passes through the front plane. So now, just like we did in the, in the last example, we're gonna create some geometry that looks something like this. And we're going to take this point and make it coincident to this uh, this corner here. So I for coincident. And we're gonna take this point and this point and make them vertical. So I'm gonna use V to make them vertical. And then we're gonna finish off by creating an arc here. And we want that arc to have some tangency to that uh, upper line. So just by dragging it in there and watching the preview, we can actually establish that tangency relationship uh, nice and smooth, kind of all, all in one move there. And just using the same dimensions that we used on the head, I'm gonna make this at a depth of 2.5 millimeters. 
And I think that looks pretty good. So now let's create our center line for the revolve. So just create a line here like so, nice, easy to select line. And then we can do our revolve and we're gonna say this is gonna be a remove and the revolve axis is gonna be this axis here. We can see that the preview is showing that that's gonna give us a nice round off on that hex nut, just like what we did with the hex bolt on the head. So we're gonna hit the green check mark there, and then we're gonna jump into a mirror command, and we're gonna say we wanna do a feature mirror. We don't wanna mirror the entire part, we just wanna mirror a feature. That feature is gonna be this round off on the hex nut, and the mirror plane is gonna be this plane that we created the original sketch on. So that makes it really easy for us to get in there and make some adjustments. If we decide later on we want the thickness of that hex nut to be a little bit more narrow, say 18 millimeters, well, we can make that change and be confident that the rounding off on the top of the hex nut and the rounding off on the bottom of the hex nut are both going to update properly. So that's always what we're looking for in parametric design. Let's do a little bit of renaming here. So we'll go shift N. We'll rename this to uh, hex nut main extrude. We'll rename this one here to uh, rounded off corners or hex nut rounded off corners, hex nut rounded off corners. And then this one here, here what I could do is I could do a shift N and then a control C. And uh, that way when I get down to this feature here, I do a shift N, I could call this mirror dash and then control V rounded off corners. So I know that, you know, that's the mirror of the hex nut rounded off corners, nice and easy. All right, let's now hide the hex bolt. And just like we talked about in the previous example with the uh, with the hex bolt, what we need to do is we need to make sure that this hex nut has a nice lead in, kind of making it easy for us to um, to thread the hex bolt into the hex nut. Now, unlike the last example, we actually can use a chamfer for this application. So we can choose the chamfer command and we can choose this upper edge and this lower edge here. And then we can input a chamfer distance. I think about eight millimeters is gonna work. Actually, maybe five millimeters will be a little bit better than the default five looks a little bit better there. So that's gonna give us a lead in and we can continue to adjust that once we remove the thread geometry from this model. And that is what we are going to do next. So we're gonna show the hex bolt now, and now we've got the hex bolt interfering with the hex nut. If we go to the front plane here and we do a section view, you can see that the hex, uh, the hex bolt, the geometry of the hex bolt is interfering with the geometry of the hex nut, and that's the geometry that we want to remove. So once we remove that, then we'll have some nice threads running right through the hex nut. That's exactly what we want. So let's, uh, let's, let's do that. Let me get out of my section view here. So edit, uh, sorry, turn off section view. And now let's jump into a Boolean command. So we're gonna go down here to these solid bodies here. We're gonna uh, pick one and then we're gonna pick the second one here. So we pick both of these solid bodies and we're gonna do a right mouse button and choose Boolean. But instead of combining these together, doing what's called a union, we're gonna do what's called a subtract. And the tool that we're gonna be using as our subtraction tool is gonna to be the hex bolt. And then the target is going to be the hex nut. Now, I'm not going to use these exact settings, but just so that we can kind of get a look at what this thing is gonna look like, let's hit the green check mark here. And there we go. Look at that, we got a nice lead in from that chamfer, a nice lead in for our threads, and those threads have been removed. The problem with this setup is that it is exactly one to one. And most of the time your 3D printer is not gonna have that level of accuracy. You're gonna need to implement a little bit of what's called clearance. Now, if you wanna see what that one-to-one -one looks like, you can roll back before that Boolean command in the tree here. You can take the hex bolt, right mouse button on the, on the parts down here in the parts studio, and you can choose copy. And we could just make an exact copy of this part in its exact current location. So translate 000, hit the green check mark. And now we've got an exact copy of the hex bolt down here. So let's rename that one, shift N, call this one copy of hex bolt. And now we're gonna roll forward to our, uh, our Boolean command here. So there's the Boolean command. So now we've removed the geometry of the hex bolt from the hex nut, but we've also got an extra copy of the hex bolt. And the reason we would do this is just because then we could jump into our front view section view and we can see what we're talking about here. So this is an exact one-to-one, line-to-line, zero clearance, uh, perfect accuracy, perfect machining. If you like the idea of perfect one-to-one -one machining, hit the like button down below. Uh, it's always good to like these videos, to like these tutorials, but that's not what I need for 3D printing. I need to have a little bit more clearance when I get in there 
and start doing some 3D printing. And so I'm going to cancel this section view and I'm going to go back to that Boolean command in the tree here. And from the Boolean command, what I'm going to do is an edit and I'm going to choose this option here for offset. Now, the cool thing about the offset command is that when you choose the option for offset, you can either offset everything on the original body or you can choose some specific faces to offset. I'm going to hide this copy of the hex bolt uh, just so that I don't accidentally pick up faces from the copy. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to choose the faces to offset. And those faces are going to be the, I believe there's four faces of the helix. So one, two, three, then there's a fourth one here on the underside, four. So four faces of that helix or of that sweep of the thread, pick those four faces. And then for my offset distance here, I'm going to choose a distance of 0 0.4. Now, why am I choosing 0 0.4? Uh, first of all, 0 0.4 is the diameter of the nozzle on my 3D printer, so it's easy to remember. And second, I just know from experience that if I leave myself with about 0 0.4 of clearance, my parts tend to fit together pretty snug. Uh, they work, you know, pretty well. It might be a little bit on the loose side, but if it is, I could always uh, go back and create another print where it's a little bit tighter. Uh, but it just happens to work for me for my 3D printers. For your 3D printer, that, that gap, that tolerance might need to be a little bit larger, or it might be able to be a little bit tighter, a little bit smaller. But basically what's happening here is I'm creating a surface offset on this entire thread, and that is what I am removing from the hex nut. And so when I hit the green check mark here, and then we show the hex bolt again, so let's show that hex bolt again, let's jump into our front plane section view again here. This is a great tool to kind of examine the results. See, look at that. Now we've got a nice clearance there between the hex nut and the hex bolt. And I think that's gonna really help us when we get into the world of 3D printing and trying to 3D print these two parts out and getting them to fit together. So that takes care of that. I'm gonna cancel that section view. I really don't need this uh, transform, so I could either suppress this or um, just you know delete it either way. And that leaves me with just the hex nut. Now I can do a right mouse button down here and choose export, and I can export that to an STL. We'll call this one hex nut, hex nut, test one. We can send that off to our 3D printer, and hopefully we can end up with some really nice results. And so that's how I ended up with this kind of cool shape here, this hex bolt, which actually can be threaded into a hex nut. And if you enjoyed this video tutorial, be sure to let me know down in the comments. If you're using this in a classroom, I'd love to hear from you. I love hearing when teachers are using these tutorials to help their students. And of course, be sure to subscribe and be sure to come back for the next set of On Shape Tips and Tricks.